On the 23rd of October 1943, a transport arrived in Auschwitz with 1,800 Jewish prisoners from Bergen-Belsen. The male prisoners were directed to Crematorium 2 to be murdered there, whilst the female prisoners were taken to Crematorium 3. 35-year-old Oberscharfuhrer Josef Schillinger was in charge at Crematorium 2. Prisoners were asked to undress for disinfection. One lady, the 26-year-old dancer and cabaret star Franziska Mannheimer Rosenberg, better known by her stage name of Franziska Mann, may have seen through the deception and after taking off her bra she slapped Schillinger around the face. In a struggle she had managed to grab his revolver and shot him in the abdomen. The 27-year-old Unterscharfuhrer Wilhelm Emmerich returned fire and hit the young woman in the leg. The resistance did not help the victims as the Nazis managed to kill them anyway, but Schillinger also died. That's the legend, that's one of the stories, and of course we cannot really know what happened on this day, but in this video I shall try to look at this incident in more detail. Joseph Schillinger was born on the 21st of January 1908 in Oberimsingen, a town located within two kilometres of the Rhine, which after 1919 meant that following the territorial changes at the end of World War I, it was almost on the French border. Schillinger was trained as a Cooper. He joined the SS at the beginning of World War II and received the SS number 47468. He was sent to Auschwitz-Birkenau and he was employed there as a Rapportführer, that is a report leader in the men's camp. A Rapportführer was a non-combat position of the SS used within the staff of the concentration camps. The Rapportführer had a number of Blockführer who answered to him, who in turn oversaw individual barracks in a concentration camp. The most important task of the Rapportführer was to conduct the morning and evening camp roll call from which the Rapport, that is to say the report, of the number of prisoners present came from. The Rapportführer also oversaw camp discipline of prisoners and, as one would expect from a mid-rank NCO, assistance with the training for more junior SS personnel. From the end of October 1942, Schillinger was posted to Helmeck, where a pond was built which was supposed to serve as a water reservoir. The conditions were inhumane and by the 9th of December 1942, 47 prisoners had died there. In 1969, a memorial was placed on the site to remind passers-by of what had happened there. From here, Schillinger returned to Auschwitz-Birkenau, where he was once more Rapportführer in the men's camp. Tadeusz Borowski, an Auschwitz survivor who committed suicide in July 1951, wrote of Schillinger, The blow of his hand was as powerful as a club. He easily smashed a jaw, and where he struck, blood flowed. His name is often in one breath associated with those Auschwitz murderers who boasted that they had personally killed tens of thousands of people with their fists, clubs or weapons. Franziska Mannheim Rosenberg was born on the 4th of February 1917. She studied modern ballet, classical ballet and tap dancing at the school of Irena Prusitska. One of her contemporaries wrote of her thus, This undoubtedly extremely talented dancer has everything to shine in a wider arena. She is, as it were, made to dance. She has beautiful, shapely legs, a wonderful, shapely body, a colossal impulsiveness and enormous dance ambition, which goes hand in hand with her complete concentration on what she is doing. Her dancing took her to Vienna, where she participated in an international competition. On the 23rd of February 1935, she performed at a ball attended by representatives of the Portuguese and Hungarian diplomatic corps at the Hotel Europejski in Warsaw. In March 1936, she waltzed at the Polish theatre. 
In February 1938, she gave a recital at the Grand Theatre in Warsaw to grand acclaim. In May 1939, she won the fourth prize at the International Dance Competition in Brussels, where she performed as a ballerina. 125 dancers from 20 countries took part in the competition. She also appeared in the film Polki Swinon, Polish Women Are Famous. The photographs here come from 1939 when she was at the height of her career and still only 22 years old. This career was to be cut short by the Nazi invasion of the 1st of September 1939, the capture of Warsaw and the brutal occupation. As with other Jews, she found herself in the Warsaw Ghetto in 1940. However, the ghetto also had a rich cultural life and in 1941 she performed at the Femina Theatre at Leszno 25 in the production Battalion of Humour. Gazeta Zhidowska, one of only two publications which were permitted by the Nazi occupiers for distribution in the ghettos, reported that Francisca Mann participated in the opening of the Femina Theatre and performed in various plays, danced and directed the ballet. She also played at the Bagatella Café. As the Nazis deported and murdered the Jewish population of Warsaw in Treblinka in 1942, many Jews attempted to escape the ghetto. There was a rumour that foreign passport holders would be saved and such passports from countries like Chile, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Paraguay and Peru could be bought for very high prices. At times, these passports might have been what was then termed false genuine, being the property of people who had died and who could, in theory, pass an investigation, or, as was the overwhelming amount of these passports, outright forgeries, which might only help in the case of a quick spot check. People who believed that they might have the right to the protection of these countries came together in the Hotel Polski in the centre of Warsaw. The full story of what happened here is certainly worth looking at at another time and this story is very complicated and certainly needs more detail. However, in short, the whole Hotel Polski affair appears to have been the idea of two Jewish criminals as a way of making money. The Gestapo went along with it as it allowed them to draw Jews out of hiding. The role played by Francisca Mann in the Hotel Polski affair is not known. She may just have been a bystander who got a foreign passport, but she's also been accused of collaborating with the Nazis in order to save her life. Given the terror and circumstances of the time whereby the bulk of the Jewish population of Warsaw had been brutally deported to Treblinka and murdered there, one cannot judge people from today for the choices they had to make then. As far as she was concerned, it is probable that somehow she got out of the ghetto and was living in hiding on the Catholic side of the city. Somehow she got a foreign passport and believing that she could be evacuated out of Nazi-occupied Europe, reported to the Hotel Polski in the summer of 1943 alongside around 2,500 other people who thought that they had their ticket out. The Nazis permitted people to be evacuated from the Hotel Polski as a way of deceiving others that they were indeed on their way to Latin America. Francisca was evacuated out of Warsaw in July 1943, but not to South America, but only as far as Bergen-Belsen. Whatever the Nazis might have promised them at the time, they lied. The victims were deceived. In October 1943, these people were sent from Bergen-Belsen to Auschwitz to be murdered. Francisca Mann, together with her daughter, were sent to the gas chamber in Birkenau. The precise details of what happened then are not clear, but here is the statement of Shlomo Dragon, Camp number 93359, a member of the Sonder Commando which insisted in the undressing rooms before people were gassed, removed the bodies from the gas chambers and then burned their corpses. There was a woman standing there, very elegantly dressed with her daughter. 
At that time, SS man Schillinger was in the undressing room. The woman did not want to strip naked and was standing in her brown underwear. Schillinger turned and screamed, Take your clothes off and pointed his gun at her bra. The woman took off her bra, threw it in Schillinger's face, which hit him on the shoulder. The gun fell from his hand to the ground. The woman quickly picked it up, aimed it at Schillinger and shot him on the spot. Panic broke out in the undressing room. The Germans got scared that the woman would start shooting at them. They led all the women out of the undressing room and shot them. Only after this were the prisoners of the Sonderkommando allowed to return to the undressing room. I was standing very close to that woman, maybe five metres away. There weren't many people left in the room, and the woman was one of the last. That's why I was able to see it. There were rumours that she was an actress, but I never really found out who she was. Another Sonder Commando prisoner, Philippe Müller, was an eyewitness and he said that the woman wrestled the pistol from SS Oberscharfuhrer Walter Krakenek who, and fired three times. The first shot hit Schillinger, a second shot missed Krakenek and the third wounded SS Oberscharfuhrer Wilhelm Emmerich. The other women in the undressing room also defended themselves against their impending murder. The riot was put down by the use of machine guns and the surviving women were subsequently gassed. There are various other accounts of this incident but clearly they are not true so I'm not going to repeat them. I also need to make it very clear that it may not even have been Francisca Mann who initiated this act of defiance. Schillinger died from his gunshot wounds on the way to the hospital. His body was transferred to Oberringsingen and buried with full military honours. Quakenat was executed by the British in 1946. Emmerich ended up in Bergen-Belsen where he was captured by the British and died of typhus on the 23rd of May 1945. In the criminal trial against Adolf Eichmann in 1961, the witness Ahrob Berlin testified that Schillinger had committed the worst atrocities in Birkenau. He didn't go into any details but only briefly described the uprising which led to Schillinger's death. In an interview recorded around 2016, Auschwitz survivor Leon Henry Schwarzbaum described the circumstances of Schillinger's death. According to him, Schillinger was shot by a young Auschwitz inmate with his own revolver, which caused even his SS comrades to be happy because he was a brutal man. The historian Andreas Meckel successfully campaigned for the mayor of Breisach in 2003 to have Schillinger's tombstone removed from the military cemetery in Oberinsingen. Meckel had learned of the location of Schillinger's grave and did not want to accept the fact that a perpetrator of the Holocaust was commemorated with a gravestone whilst millions of Holocaust victims were denied this personal commemoration. Schillinger's name was also removed from the local war memorial. This story is very complicated and clearly there's much that we do not know. There are also some obviously fabricated stories on the internet. Some of them are outright fabrications, others are exaggerated. Clearly, the idea of a very attractive young lady resisting the Nazis at the moment of death is one which is appealing. But we do not know if this act of desperate resistance even came from Francisco, nor do we know of how she got out of the ghetto and ended up in the Hotel Polski. Of course, at the time, no one was taking notes and recording their movements. All I can do is to attempt to sort through what we know from documentary evidence and piece the rest together. I hope you found this interesting. I upload at least every Friday at 20 hundred hours Central European time. So that's where I am, Central Europe, and I'm in Poland. I also upload at other times as well. So if you'd like to know when I'm uploading videos, then please subscribe and press the notifications button. My specialization is in the Holocaust and I've spent many years in Poland and Germany studying it. I also upload videos related to Nazi Germany in general and the Soviet Union.
and have recently done a number of videos on the conflict in Ukraine. Thanks for listening and all the best from me in Wrocław, Poland.